Hello everybody and welcome back to another podcast with the centralized Dave and Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David, how's it going? I'm pretty fine myself. How about you? Yeah, good. I'm back in Tokyo. Nice to be back here. We have not made many podcasts this year, but we feel that today is an excellent time to make one. So, um, uh, let's start with the updates of the Bitcoin. Curtis, yeah, it's sure. your turn. Yeah, lots to talk about. Um, so last weekend, I think the news came out last Friday uh, that uh, Silicon Valley Bank was going bankrupt, right? And we'd already had Silvergate Bank as well, both crypto banks. Um, and mm -hmm. so the panic Friday night was, what are they going to do for the Monday open, right? That mm -hmm. they needed to, someone needed to step in and either buy it, mm -hmm. buy the company or, um, or there'd be problems on Monday. Um, the Fed came out, I think Sunday, there was a, a press release either early Monday morning or Sunday night from the Fed saying they were going to guarantee all the creditors. Um, all the companies, hundreds of companies and all their employees would have not made payroll. So so long story short, we had um, a bounce. You can see here, uh, Bitcoin went up to, you know, 23, 24 and then carried on to about 26,000 at the high. And this was um, a combination of factors. But I think the, the theme of this podcast is that uh, bad news is good news. Um, in other words, because we had a, a bailout and a bankruptcy, I think the market is saying, look, the Jerome Powell cannot raise rates much anymore. So the system is starting to break a little bit and Fed rate hikes are uh, maybe going to no more or maybe just a little bit more. So, so ironically, the bad news triggered a rally in stocks and crypto that maybe uh, quantitative easing is coming back and that uh, we're bottoming here. Now, I don't know if that's true. There definitely could be more contagion. But anyways, in the short term, it was bullish for, for crypto, you can see here. You know, I tweeted that, um, you know, perhaps finally, uh, after many, many years, people will start seeing Bitcoin as a flight to safety, right? So we've also seen Bitcoin decorrelate from stocks, modestly at least. And um, this was just, a, you know, a two day move, but um, Bitcoin doesn't have any counterparty risk, right? Whereas your your money in a bank account, if it's not an FDIC insured, you can lose it all, right? So I, I don't know, but um, uh, I think it's a, a bullish two day event. Let's call it that. Interesting um, that you say about the decorrelation, <clears throat> because this is the phase video that I've made Right, decoupling. Ten days yeah, okay, ago, yeah. it was 6th yeah. of March, and I was talking about the decoupling incoming in Right, March. yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so I guess it's my turn to, to update you. So I encourage you people to have a look at our podcasts from November last year. Mind you that we did like two podcasts in this area at the second half of November when everybody was bearish and also most of us, because it was also Isabel, most of us were bearish and also the viewers that were commenting on the video were bearish. However, I started talking about something and I was afraid to speak it out as well, because quote unquote, I said that it is, it looks too good to be true. And I was talking uh, multiple times uh, in the previous podcast on the, on the descending wedge. Yeah. And on the, my opinion that it's going to break upwards, break upwards yeah. means above this line. Week is the break. So we can say technically, uh, that is now done. So I was actually right. Yeah. Even though I was, uh, <clears throat> again, I was too afraid to say it because it was just uh, remember that uh, when we were at 15, 16K and there was so much contagion or the FTX situation looked so bad yeah. that I was just, it just felt too good to be true to say that it's 28K next or 29 or 30K. But I was still talking about it nonetheless, but I was debating that maybe it's going to happen later or whatnot. Now, the break upwards happened. Also, my FaceTime videos, as I suggest that you could have a look at them. Um, 
Now, um, what's uh, now? Now, when the break upwards has been technically done, it's just a week. It's not even a close, not even on daily. So more yeah. so not on weekly. So now, what's the situation is? So well, that I would like to derive from a couple of factors, and mainly two that I like to follow. So first of all is the over leveraging indicator. So again, this is I, I often I often show this on my uh, in my videos in my podcasts. So that those of you who watch it, you know that uh, this blue line down here is open interest slash market cap ratio, and this is how I measure with this number. I measure how much over leveraged the retail most of all is uh so if this ratio is high it means that they are over leveraged a lot that can mean right. one way or another way short or long most of the time it's long but there is occasionally a situation when there is also quite some short leverage which was the case at the end of december last year this was indeed a short squeeze at the beginning of the january right and the over leveraging indicator uh, is actually good. Uh, 1.58 is not that small if you compare it to 2021. It's not small mm -hmm. at all, but it's small comparing it to this year or the last year. Because the last time we had 1.58, it was, it wasn't, yeah, it's, it's still even lower than it was at the beginning of the January. It's still lower than it was the second half of the previous year. Like we have not had this low number of over leveraging since May or April, April, May 2022. That was quite some time. It's, it's soon going to be one year. So this is actually, this looks really good. There's not that much leverage, not comparing to this year at least. So uh, second uh, positive new is this beautiful spike of the funding, nature funding fees. I also tweeted it because I too was scared like it was necessary to be scared when we were 19.5k just a few days ago. But then when I saw this spike, I also tweeted that I tweeted something like cavalry has arrived or something like that. And it, it looks like I also uh, hit the nail there. Um, and also this spike also reminds me the uh, November situation and also the whole situation with the bank really reminds me the November situation from the last year and the second factor that i would like to mention that i also have i look every now and then are the moving averages the moving averages of course you have to be careful because everybody's looking at them uh, but you can play with ex with the fact that you can expect the market to try to play the people so we had touch of 20 moving average we had break the 20 20 week moving average in january and we had a touch there and that's that's actually like we have not had this for wow the last time this happened was september 2021 and before that it happened in september 2020 maybe it happened also in the may 2020 well, mm. I mean, this is, uh, I would say that not only bullish, but it just, again, it looks a little bit too good to be true because this usually means that this uh, little uh, bullish mood uh, is going to continue at least for some time again, for a couple of weeks at least. But the most important, I think, here is the 200 moving average. That's this red line, which has been finally crossed, but again, not closed above. And I think yeah. if the market wants to play people again, and I know it, it wants to and it will. Uh, what is going to happen then next is that we are going to have to close weekly above the 200 uh, weekly moving average, which means above 26K close weekly, okay. maybe even 28K, right. who knows. Right. After that, however, it's still the fun doesn't end because after that, I would imagine for the best best possible play to close back on the line so to close right. around 26k 
And that would indeed look the most bullish. Uh, to close right. weekly above and close another weekly on the line, you know, from from the above, you know, after after we've broken it. And then that situation, I think that would convince definitely even the, the, the remaining people that are not all in would remain them to not only go all in, but then we would see leverage going and this over leveraging indicator, uh, we would see it going up a lot. And that would indeed be start of the very bearish uh, stuff. Not okay, so we're still in the bear market. It's a bear market rally is what you're saying, even if it closes above 26K on the weekly. Uh, depends how you define the bear market rally. Um, but um, from the yeah, from the usual perspective, how people take the bear market rally, like like we're gonna come back down anyway later. Is that what okay. you mean, right? Like well, bear I don't market know. rally we, is if it's been um so November 2021 was the peak at the 69k. So it's mm -hmm. been uh 12, 13. Uh, it's been 16 months since the peak the all-time high mm -hmm. and then very soon 17 months and then maybe we get above the 200 week moving average and and consolidate above that it's getting to be a very long bear market from a historical standpoint in terms of bitcoin in the last three bear markets right it's yes. getting very long well now let's move to the s p 500 would you like yeah. to comment on that sure so um yeah we've held this well, we're about 3,900. The low was October of last year at around 3,500. Um, again, stocks rallied a bit with um, crypto on Monday. They've sold off midweek a little bit. Uh, but I think stocks would also be thinking uh, the Fed is done hiking. Um, you know, if we don't have another series of bank failures, um, we may have a Goldilocks scenario. In other words, we don't have a, a Lehman shock type environment, and yet the Fed stops raising or even starts cutting. Uh, we still have job growth. And then the bottom was indeed last October, and we start building, um, you know, building higher highs um, towards the end of the year. That, that's assuming we don't have any more contagion. Um, Credit Suisse just got a loan from the Swiss government. So there's a lot of potential explosions out there um again bad news is good news because all this means is the governments are coming in to bail people out and they're going to print money and they're going to stop raising rates and the politicians are going to come in and say no more rate hikes and we want to print money for this and that so bad news might be good news again um unless it gets so bad that everything starts breaking and then it's uh, a totally different conversation in other words, you know, it just gets out of control and we go into a, a big recession and, and job losses and stuff like that. Because we had, so January we had 500,000 jobs and then this month we had 300,000 jobs. So an average of 400,000 jobs per month in the US, that's not a recession, that's a growing economy. Um, even if the jobs aren't great quality, um, it's still a lot of people working. Um, housing still hasn't collapsed. So this is what the S&P is saying here, uh, that uh, we're holding holding on here. Yeah, I don't have a much to add to that. I do think that the uh, rate hike will not happen after the last uh, credit event. I think this is the credit event that is happening. And I think that it is indeed going to cause the, the Fed. And I think we are going to learn it soon, I think this month. Maybe, who knows, maybe even this week, we're going to learn that there is not going to be any more rate hikes. So, right. The market, I agree um, with you in this. It's so it's now 60% chance the, the, you know, they bet on the futures, right? On the, is it's going to be half a point or zero or 0.25. Mm -hmm. So the betters are saying 60% chance there's no rate hike. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then a 40% chance of 0.25, but nobody thinks we're getting a 0.5% rate hike. And a yeah. week ago, it would have been a 50% chance. So the bets have totally changed now. So the bettors agree with you that we're probably getting a zero. At worst, we're getting a 0.25. And again, that's why risk assets are rallying. Okay. Uh, I think you want to talk a little bit about gold. Sure. Yeah. 
You also brought but us maybe, this. Yes? Yeah, we could, okay, we could look yeah. at gold here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just looking back at 2008, and then obviously we had the great financial crisis and Lehman bankruptcy. I'm just sort of trying to zoom back a bit and give people a broader view of gold. It You saw that it fell in the crisis, 2008. You can see, if you can put your cursor there, it initially fell. Uh, yeah, right there, it fell off. Uh, because right in crashes, everything mm -hmm. sells off. Gold sells yeah. off, Bitcoin sells off. People sell whatever they can because they're getting margin called. They don't have enough money to pay their mortgage. Everyone sells everything. So there's nowhere safe to go. And that could happen later this year where just everything sells off. Bitcoin goes to 10K, gold goes to 1400, whatever. But you'll then have often a V recovery when the government steps in and starts printing again. And look what gold did after it fell off. It went from 850 USD to 1850 in about two years. And it peaked in 2011, maybe 1900 there, right? Um, and why is that? Uh, so they cut rates down to zero. So your US treasuries went low, US dollar went down, right? Gold is priced in US dollars in this chart, right? So yeah. it 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 uh, acts inversely to the, the, the DXY or the, the value of the US dollar. Um, and also it's a flight to safety. It has no counterparty risk, all of that. So I'm just suggesting in this chart, if you look at today, we've got Silvergate Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, and signature bank mm -hmm. collapses. We've had a bit of a sell-off already. We could get another one, but let's say over a two-year period, it may be a good play to go long, and it may go, who knows, 2,700, 3,000 is very possible. I'm not saying this is a prediction, but it's an interesting perspective. Yeah, it's very, very good that you mentioned the possible uh, 1,400 because that's exactly my red line was the profit take from my imaginary imaginary short and i was <laughs> i was thinking to short from this green area that would have been already i think stop lost right uh, unless unless i had a stop loss at the very 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 top i did not short it and i think yeah this short is just too hard as well with shorts it usually they are extremely hard to catch yeah. But, uh, even if you. So I think the only reason you get to thirteen hundred is if we have again a, a massive banking crisis. And if you uh, if you if you short gold right now with a stop loss at the very very top. Well, right now you would actually get three point six RR risk reward, which is actually pretty good. But of course, it's extremely difficult. It, it goes against your instincts right now to sh try to show the gold. So of course, but that's the that's the game. It has to be extremely difficult. It has to feel impossible. So that's why you can only do it with a sh small amounts that you will not really be hurt that much if you are going to get stop loss and lose them. But yes, yeah. the short as I have been thinking about it right now i can delete this area because this area got broken if you short gold right now it would have been 3.6 rr so that's just uh but this is not a financial advice of course right right let's have a look at the us dollar yeah yes. this is huge yeah this is huge because again my line work looks like wait it's wait a second let me uh try to have a look at the daily and daily it was perfect close <laughs> on the line and again these lines i drew like a year ago both of them so i but back when I was drawing these two lines, we were like, here, I had no idea that we are going to be touching them this much or, you know. Right. So, <laughs> right. So as if they stop raising rates or they cut rates, it means people are being paid either the same or less to hold U.S. dollars in bonds. So the bid on the U.S. dollar goes down and DXY falls. The reason it rose so much is because rates were rising in 2022, and that's why it rose up. So for your listeners um, to understand that the DX, the the bid, the the Fed rate greatly impacts the demand for U.S. dollars. People buy the bonds and lock up the U.S. dollars at, at a high rate of five, six percent. It's very attractive. If the rate is four or three or two, it's much less attractive and the U.S. dollar value falls. When U.S. dollar value falls, gold is getting a bid and risk on. There's less uh, risk-free rate. It's called the risk-free rate. So stocks are more attractive. 
Bitcoin's more attractive crypto. So um, it's very likely that the, X, the US dollar is going to weaken from here on, or at least stay around the 104 level, but it could go down to the 100 level. And that's good for risk assets, all of the things being equal. That would be also uh, hilarious uh, from the perspective of my lines, because it then it would really look like my lines really like pushed, like stopped the US dollar. Like when I stopped. Yeah, you did it all by yourself. Stopped. It looks like, like you're responsible. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so yeah. let's progress to CPI, maybe. Yeah. So this was the second. So we had two big bullish uh, news events this week. One was the big the 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 bank collapse with the government intervention, which said maybe the Fed's not tightening. And then I think on Wednesday we had the February uh, CPI print at six percent. So we've had eight consecutive months of lower CPI. The June 2022 was nine point one, and you can see it goes down one, two, three, four, five, eight consecutive. And, mm -hmm. you know, this from January went from 6.4 to 6. So this was also very bullish. Um, it suggests that inflation might be getting towards 4 or 5% in a couple months. It may even go down to 3% by the end of the year. It takes the pressure off Jerome Powell to raise rates. So we've had two events that let Jerome Powell say, okay, we're going to stop raising rates. That's good for That's good for the economy, right? Or good for risk assets. Um, he can say, look, we don't want to break any more banks. And also inflation's coming down. Jobs are okay. So it's that sweet spot. So again, it's a soft landing, perhaps, as long as we don't have any more banks uh, collapse and credit freezes. Um, so again, this is very, very um, good news for people uh, that are looking to for the stock market and for the crypto market to bottom later this year or or now. At the end of our podcast, maybe let's talk a little bit about altcoins, if you don't mind. Sure, we can go to that. So um, would you like to uh, say anything about Ethereum? I know you love altcoins, right? Uh, um, no, I don't follow the Ethereum chart. I think isn't the um, their, the unstake, they can unstake it fairly soon. Is that May? And people okay. don't know what will be done. Will, will people dump at that point or not? Well, um, and they're doing some sort of upgrade. Isn't that right? But that I know there is some sort of upgrade that is now running on testnet and it might be online in April or come okay. online on April. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you that later, if that happens in May, if if a lot of uh, ETH is, becomes available, then of course market is going to account for like the, the supply increased. So the price of the individual token, I think it's going to be mom uh, it's going to momentarily fall, but that's now too ahead of time. Like let's uh, now do step by step. And what I wanted to uh, point out is that the dominance went up when the Bitcoin went up. And that's yet another, yet another very bullish this is line. Big, oh, I didn't know that. Bitcoin dominance at this 45%. Is Bitcoin dominance is at 45%. And wow. it, is, it- Is that including uh, stable coins? Including stable coins. Yes, that's right. It also happened, yeah, right here in September and October, 2021. And it also happened, well, before that, we can go to the history. So my point is that when you see Bitcoin dominance going up this much, and because, and it's because the Bitcoin went up, it's actually, I think that it's going to be now a good time for altcoins. And maybe the last but not least, let's have a look at the moving averages of Ethereum. So when I start, I have three moving averages here. So, uh, oh my gosh, this is just hilarious. Wow. Again, this is a good time for altcoins, guys. Oh my God. Because, um, uh, so this blue line is 50, 50 week moving average. Uh, as you can see, it, it, it was a resistance uh, in February. Also, I'm going to delete this area. This area, this area worked perfectly. Okay, this area got visited. Also, I'm going to delete this line so it doesn't disturb you, your view. But we had a touch of two lines, and that's 20 week moving average and 200 week moving average. So if you, you, we all know how important 200 week moving average is, and we came back already with Ethereum tested it, and um, I think that. Uh, 
after that it's going to uh, end. And not only that, we also tested it and walked it on the 20 week uh, moving average. So, right. So good to time to buy Ethereum, you think? I think that Ethereum also coupled with the uh, incoming upgrade, I think uh, it's going to, uh, yes, Ethereum has not yet broken the descending wedge. So to answer your question, yes, I think that Ethereum's price is going to break 2000 okay. uh, in the upcoming, I don't know when, but next, okay, let's say next, let's not say in upcoming weeks, but let's just say next. And uh, yeah, that is also going to coincide with the touching of the 200 moving average, 20 moving average. And right now, I think the last moving average that needs to be test that needs to be uh, tested, and that that needs to uh, needs to turn into support is the 50 big moving average, and that's happening at the very moment. Again, it's looking uh, like we're 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 bottoming. We're getting you know the the bear market's getting longer and longer. Mm -hmm. The price action is is consolidating and turning upwards. It's been 16 months since the peak. We've had tons of bad news. Had a lot of pain. We've had a big sell off, about 80% in, in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So a lot of factors. The list is getting longer and longer that the bear market has bottomed and is getting getting old. Um you don't seem too willing to make that call. <laughs> uh, no, not yet, because uh, I try to go step by step. And what I can see, the next step for Ethereum is still, Ethereum is still due to break the descending wedge from the last year. So the next step that I can just say for Ethereum that the price needs to break 2000. And for Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin is now less bullish than Ethereum, than altcoins are. We didn't talk about the USDC peg breaking. Oh, yes. Uh, maybe we can just mention it last time. That's so this is the news. USDC, USDT. And yes, I was Crazy. watching it closely. I was watching it very closely because, well, first of all, I did not have any USDCs because I did think that the risk for USDCs were great, was greater than USDT, than the Tether, because it was very contrarian to what most of the people believed. And that's, as for those of you who know me a little bit, that's number one reason why I go and start think it when right. I see that most of the people think the opposite. What I really got uh, shocked by uh, was that the day my favorite uh, stablecoin, DAI, make a yeah. DAI, it, uh, it, it followed the suit because it had lots of USDCs as reserves. Yeah, it was 30% cross collateralized. So uh, that was that was the biggest shocker to me, and I was very worried about my favorite stablecoin. But it recovered as well, and I think it's not going to make the same mistake. I think Dai is now safer than it was, and I think that the next time when I want to go to altcoins, I think I'm gonna go into Dai. You mean stablecoins? Uh, when I want to go into stablecoins, I I think I'm gonna go into Dai. Yes, right I think now risk right. off. So that was, yeah, USDC was supposed to be the safe one, and it, was, it turns out it wasn't. That's um, what the majority they, believed, but not. They had much. about $3.3 .3 billion in Silicon Valley Bank, mm -hmm. but now the money was guaranteed, and they're going to move it to, I think it's New York Mellon. They're going to move that, that money to a larger bank that's safer. So we'll see. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, it, it's it, almost everything bad that could have happened has happened, right? In the last year and a half. Let's see. Let's see what what's what happens next. Let's see. We will uh, definitely try to be here for you, and we will try to do the podcast again more often. I have less time. Uh, I'm uh, more tight on the schedule, but again, uh, it doesn't mean that I can't find a time like once every two weeks or so. Thanks for today, David. On my channel, Gresham's Law, um, I'm going to do a macro, a longer form macro view of, um, uh, sorry, a, a macro update and then a, a crypto update. So I'll do two new videos this month. So anyone who's interested, um, look at a link below. And yeah, definitely uh, check him out, yes. That's great. Thanks a lot, David. <laughs>